Hi, my name's Kate Hemmings and I'm pleased to welcome you to the November issue of Quick and Crafty magazine. I'm joined by Corinne Brad, who's going to be showing us how to do kimono folding later on. Hi Corinne. Hello Kate. So what have we got with Quick and Crafty this issue? Well we've got some great free gifts on this next issue of Quick and Crafty. First of all we've got a um, beading kit that comes Fab. in the front and Jill Albus has really made the most of it. There's some lovely ideas here, candle holders and some bracelets and I know your favourite. I love the colours of these. Yeah. They look like sweets. Yes, they do, don't they? Like little ball sweets. But the earring idea, you know, earrings on a card is a really nice idea. It means you can give the gift with the card. Definitely, because I always make jewellery and always put it in sort of a little pouch or a box, but I've never actually thought yeah. of doing well, that. Well, if you so make really jewellery, nice. you'll also like the next free gift that's on Queen Crafty magazine, which is the next issue of Bedazzled. Fab, that's such yeah. a fab. You've got these packs <laughs> of projects, loads of brilliant beads, and a brilliant excuse to go shopping for more as you well. You don't need to go shopping for more yeah, beads. Yeah, I always do, really. You never have too many beads. It's like shoes. Um, now, who did this project here? Now, Lisa Steed Davy did these. Um, these are great. They're new baby cards. And also, I mean, a lot of the baby stuff is very pastel and subtle. This is, this is real slap you in the face brightness. <laughs> and it's great because babies love bright colours. You know, you can hang these as cot ornaments. Um, there's a great large green sun face here and there's a lovely cushion cover and I love the fabric that she's used this spotted fabric which she's ironed on before then stitching it on to make sure that everything stays on yeah because that's obviously you know, really your important babies, if you're babies are incredibly baby. strong actually how much you, you know, can pull stuff about so I do like that I also really like this card where she's sandwiched loops of ribbon mm. in between the layers and it just looks really fun and also the stitching on the card I mean there's, there's mis machine stitching down the side here and then she's pricked the paper and then actually sewn with embroidery a lot of different into techniques it. Yeah. going on in that project Ta it would take time but it's well worth doing Doing. Looks lovely. Now, what about this one here? Because I've got my eye on this yeah, one. Yeah, now well. that's Kathy Shuttleworth again. I mean, she's a great paper artist. Um, she's made some beautiful angel decorations and some coordinating gift tags. And I love this one. This is a. She's used a traditional peg doll, peg doll technique um, with cardboard. And I mean, you can pick up these dolly pegs in in sort of department stores and craft shops. And they're a great thing to sit down with the kids and make. But what I also like about Kathy's work is the pen work that she does is so exquisite. The faces that are all hand drawn. But they're absolutely perfect. Brilliant colours as well. Yeah. I like that they're not traditional Christmas colours. No, they're very the nice, very and nice and funky. The silver works very well together. Now this one is very traditional, yeah. but I've still got my eye on this Well, it's got a very here. modern twist to it though, hasn't it? it Being has. very geometric. I know you want to take him home, don't you? I do. I've taken quite a shine <laughs> to him. This is by Sarah Beeman, isn't it? Yeah. And I know you like these little shapes at the front here. Yeah, well, she's used geometric shapes to make the Santa Claus. And I mean, with something like that, you can get numerous geometrics out of one sheet of car, so there's very little waste. You know, whatever bits you've got left over, you can use for the arms and things like this. And I believe that the pattern in the magazine, you can scale up or down the photocopier to make, yeah, because it's different. all the same design. But it's very simple. The other thing I really like as well is the way that she's used sort of tech. I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but there's a textured card for the beard, so it looks like wavy hair, and there's glitter card for the, the trim. So she's really thought about yeah, that one. Yeah, it is. There's a it's lot beautiful. of detail on that one. Now, I've got something very exciting to show you, Go on then. and that's a subscription gift for Quick and Crafty this issue, which oh, is a yeah. whole selection of Dovecraft products, including these fab chipboard shapes, yes, which I, I like know you're these. a fan of. Yeah. Well, these are great. I mean, I don't know. I'm just going to very carefully open this. Colin Brad. Do you realise how many chipboard shapes that you I know, get? There's they're loads. great. They are really, you know, there's, there's loads in there, and there's also lots of little numbers and letters so you can add on to it. And the other thing is if you've got a chipboard shape and you, you know, say you've got that shape but you don't really, they're so easy to cover. Exactly, so they're, they're, they're well great. worth it. I like them. And then you get coordinating paper, rub-ons, you also get brads, which um, I know you've got I like them, they're too. great. And then adhesive ribbons. And I know a lot of people don't go for coordinated stuff, but if you've got loads of Christmas cards to whip up, it's the ideal sort of collection. And the other thing is also if, you, if you're making lots and you've got lots of odds and, and pieces of, of paper left over, you know that when you come to do another card, there'll be something in there that matches. So you, again, you can save, you know, it's all about, these days, it's all about not wasting what you've got. And we also get the Dovecraft Wonder Board, yes. which is a scoring and folding board, which is brilliant. Mm, and you can also make boxes with it as well. It's a double-sided so board. So one side you butt up against box. for the lid and one for the, for the base of it. So you can make lots of different size boxes. Yes, that's the gift of Quick and Crafty. It's 17 98 for six issues. And if you want more details of that, look at your subscription pages in the magazine or come along to www.quickandcrafty.com. Now, you're going to show us something for Yes, this? I'm going to show you how to make a kimono folded card. Um, I've done these for the first steps in Quick and Crafty. Okay, let's have a look. And they are, they're lovely little I love the origami style. Now, what got me started was I got some of these kimono blocks from um, Arts and Crafts Direct. And they're great little slices of paper. Slices of paper? Pieces of paper that are cut to just the right size. Um, I am going to demonstrate on a large sheet, though, for the camera. So make sure that your paper is three and a half times as long as the width of it. Okay. Okay. Now, if we do a pink kimono with a yellow trim, I've got to think about this. You're going to have to forgive me. It's a bit technical. Okay, to make the collar, fold down about a centimetre, okay? 
and then fold that back in itself. So you've got a double length, a double thickness for the collar, okay? Flip your paper over and fold up this much. This makes the cuffs. Love the contrast. Okay. I've got to remember how you do this. Fold this in half at the collar end so you know the centre point. Okay. Yeah. And then fold down at 90 degrees these Lining two corners. With, okay. Yeah. So you need an equal gap in the middle. Okay. And that's why you've made the centre point. Yeah. Right, okay. So these are your collars. Right. Okay. If you fold this bit up to about a quarter, that bit will be your sleeve. Okay. Turn the whole thing over and bring this up to just below, literally a millimetre, narrow. yeah, okay. millimetre below that fold. Okay. So you got that? Yeah. What you then do, and sometimes it helps if you use a ruler actually, what you want to do is you want to fold the sides in at a slight angle. And you want to make sure that this bit just meets up with that collar. So I'm just going to put a ruler on there because this is the easiest way of doing it. Okay. Just score up against the ruler with your thumb nail and fold it in. Don't worry about these, these bits here. Right. Do the same on the other side. Same sort of angle so they meet up with the collar. Okay. And sometimes it does help to do it on a grid because you can line it up with the grid and you can check that you've got your angle correct. Okay. Now when you open these bits and press this bit down, you've got your sleeves. Oh, I must admit, when you just did those folders, I couldn't work out you where that was going. You didn't know what I was doing, did you? No. If you do that... I can see it all now. If you take your collar and just yep. tuck that under the collar... Are they like your lapels then? Yeah, so that will hold it in place. Oh, I see. And then you bend these bits out to make the open flaps of your kimono. Like that, ah. okay? What you can also then do, if you want to just show a bit more lining, is if you just bend this back a bit, and again, do another triangular fold, so you've just got a bit of the lining showing. And this is why it's great using this double-sided paper. So this is, this is lasse paper. Okay. You know that's distributed by cars. Um, but the other thing, if you, if you use a patterned paper with a white background, I've gone over the back of it with a brush pen, brush pen? Brush pen to get a contrasting colour on it. Because the contrast really is effective. I don't think well, it, it would is, look as yeah. good if it was just I mean, you can colour. you can fold it in a manner that you don't actually ever see any of the contrast, but invariably like when you do it, you will get it. So all I've done is then just fold those shoulder pieces back and also an extra fold. I've started doing this just so that the shoulders aren't quite so wide and square to make oh, this so kimono. Oh, it just takes some of the angular. Yeah. That looks so, really cool. And then when you've got it, you can decorate it with gemstones. I mean, I've done a larger one here. Oh, I like here. that black and white one. Yeah, now you don't have to use oriental design paper. I mean, this is a... Um, Doodlebug Designs paper, I believe. I love yeah, but it looks great. It's very oriental. You know, there's a bit of desire thread at the bottom to look like a, a knot, and it's it's very quick and easy to do. So it's just getting the folds in the right yeah, places. Yeah, and, and it's just remembering up. which which side. But I mean, to be honest, if you buy these, it's got the instructions on the inside. Brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks for that demonstration, <laughs> okay. Lauren. That's all we've got time for here today. But once you've read your Quick and Crafty magazine, do come along to www.quickandcrafty.com for competitions, the forum, and practical challenges. Until next time.